Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Following me and sharing my videos is really important because I'm a one-man shop with absolutely no money for advertising, so social media is how I grow. So please follow me on Twitter at SYLTales and any other social media. I'm on everyone known to man and you can find them on the about page on the channel. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. So here we are again with Batwoman Season 1 Episode 12, Take Your Choice. This episode, as a non-spoiler review, I can tell you this episode, as with all other Batman, Batwoman episodes to date, was another stinking pile of bantha poodoo. In fact, it may have been the dumbest one. I mean, it's stupid. It's just stupid on so many levels. I mean, why? Why do I torture myself with this every single week? You know, I reviewed Doctor Who before this, and with the current episodes of the Chris Chibnall era, almost all of them are just SJW nightmares beating you across the head with a baseball bat just to make sure you get the message. Now, I was hoping that it would maybe exceed my expectations, the bat, I mean, the uh, Doctor Who one, and it, and it did. And my expectations, of course, at this point are lower than dinosaur bones. And fortunately, it was a good episode, so when I started out to watch Batwoman last night, I was in a pretty good mood. But then I watched it. And how, how in the name of Goose Holy Purple Robes did this show get a full season, much less a second season? Aside from the reviewers, who the hell is watching this hideous trash? Why? Why am I torturing myself like this? Ah, uh, God, why? I mean, it's just so bad. It's, it's just so bad. I mean, I mean, it's sickening to my stomach bad. Just thinking about it is just, it's terrible. I just... I'm sorry. Oh God! Oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I just, I just couldn't keep it down in my. I just, I had a good breakfast. There it is now, and I'm gonna have to clean it up later. All right. Well, you know, usually I, uh, I don't just rehash the plot. I generally, you get a lot more depth out of me. I don't tell you what I like and dislike with the plot. My, my other reviews, I go into a lot more depth. But with this episode of Batwoman, I just, I just, just don't care. It's just so bad that it doesn't deserve that much attention. So this is more a mini review where I'm going to talk about nothing but the stupid because there was so much of it from beginning to end. Anyway, we will just take it as read that if you've come to this video looking for a review, you've already watched this stupid episode. You just don't care if you have it spoiled. And frankly, I kind of hope that you haven't watched it. But nevertheless, for safety's sake, we should probably issue a... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All hands, prepare for incoming spoilers. Yes, this is a spoiler alert, and that is because I am a Fandai master, and that means that the fandom is strong with me. This is neither a boast nor a brag. This is sadly where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years' worth of science fiction. Unfortunately, we Fandai masters are cursed, because we cannot see the new stuff for the whole century that came before, and we find out that there is just not that much that's new in the world, and it sometimes interferes with your ability to enjoy things. But you don't have to be a Fandai master to hate Batwoman, even a three-year-old child would hate bad woman. Okay, I usually start out trying to say something good about an episode, even if I hated it and it was stupid as hell like this one was, so I will call out my great moments. I guess the best you can say, really, is that the performances weren't terrible, although they were all in service of incredible stupid. And Kate being with Alice when she was dying was uh, appropriate and was almost moving. It was just that you, when you got there, there was so much stupid that, you know, your mind was completely taken out of the moment. But for once, for once, Ruby Rose wasn't a block of wood. And that's something. So that's it. There are no other great moments. It's just stupid layered upon stupid layered upon stupid. 
so getting to my cringe moments, because all I have are cringe moments. This is going to review nothing but cringe moments. I may delve a little bit into the acting direction and cinematography, maybe, not much, but nothing like the depth I usually go into, because crap like this doesn't deserve that kind of effort on my part. That takes a couple of hours. Instead, I'm just going to walk through the cringe points point by point as they occurred during the episode. So to begin with, we can lay, I always like to talk about the script, because we can begin to lay this whole blame for this uh, crap on the writer, Ebony Gilbert. She is a complete hack who does not deserve to ever get hired ever again for anything. She needs to be doing something a hell of a lot more productive, like being a toll booth operator on I-88 west of Chicago. All right, let's take it from the top, shall we? So we start out with Dr. Campbell, and uh, he's August Cartwright, a.k.a. Caterpillar. Does this come as a surprise to anyone? Because I've been assuming it's the first time we saw the guy. And Sophie says later on in the next scene that if they don't catch Alice, then the next victim is on her. Well, Sophie would be good at cringe moments. I don't even know what Alice's body count is anymore. And Batwoman has had so many occasions to take her into custody and even had her in a cell once. And every single one of these deaths of that, uh, that uh, B- B- Alice does after a season one, episode one, every single one is right on Batwoman because she never does the right thing. And yet Batwoman never thinks about this. Uh, not once. Sophie did, and it was because Alice escaped from their custody one time. So who's the hero of this show? Because it sure as hell ain't Batwoman. Sophie is marginally more of a hero. And then Sophie says, honestly, I don't know who's bigger threat to Gotham, Alice or us, for getting her, for letting her get away. Well, again, Sophie would be good at cringe moments, but you know who the biggest threat to Gotham? Batwoman, for letting Alice go free over and over and over again. And then Sophie issues an order B-42. This is some kind of license to kill that a private company has? They can institute martial law and kill people on sight? How the hell does that work? Now the crows are busting down the doors of every crackhead in Gotham, setting up roadblocks and giving cavity searches to everyone. I mean, does the GCPD or the Gotham government have anything to say about it? I mean, why are they letting the crows run completely wild, violating every law having to do with an individual's rights? Search and warrant? Who the hell needs that? License to kill a suspect on, sus- on site? Ah, forget it. Who, who authorized that? Not that I don't think Alice doesn't deserve to be snuffed, but given what the crows are doing, if I lived there, I'd be moving away from Gotham to somewhere a little bit more safe because the crows now are nothing but a high-tech criminal gang. Getting Beth out of town, well, that was the first smart thing anyone's done on this show, and frankly, I was pleading for it at the end of the last episode. I said it in my review, she's a dead ringer for Alice. They can't let her be seen on the seats, uh, but they wait until the crows are just starting to turn place upside down. <sighs> and Batwoman, she then takes out four crows to save Beth from an illegal crow's checkpoint. And, well, I guess... Since she's fighting crime on some level because she's fighting a criminal gang, so I guess on that one point she's a hero, but too bad she only fights them when it serves her own selfish interests. And then we have, again, disgraced journalist Rachel Maddow's voice, which continues to be like fingernails on a blackboard. Praise goo that it's only 17 seconds long. And she says that her illegal search by high-tech gangs must count as a mammogram. And trust me, Rachel, trust me, no heterosexual male wants to feel you up, not all, ever. And then she says, holy police state, Batwoman. By that time, no, it wasn't a cute nod to the 1966 Batman series. It was just more fingernails on the blackboard. So then Alice shows up in somewhere and kills another crow. Well, chalk up another murder for which Batwoman is responsible by not apprehending Alice the 20 times she's had a chance. And then we get back to trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with Alice, with Beth, because she's got all these migraines and stuff, and, and we get the med student who is just as good as a doctor with years of experience and training. And then we find out that Beth is an expert on multiverses. I mean, why not? Every moment of the show is stupid, so why not that? And hell, I'm only at the 6 minute 36 second mark into this episode. At 7 minutes, 17 seconds, they now say that they have have 7 hours before Beth and Alice die. So keep that in mind because they're going to mess with time quite a lot here. And then they say that alcohol destroys the degeneration or helps slow it down. And they start giving Alice like 
I don't know, brandy or scotch or something. I mean, really? Really? This is going to keep her alive? The stuff that, you know, kills brain cells? And she's going to do it for seven hours? She, she isn't going to be able to even see straight after about 10 minutes of swilling this scotch that they keep handing her. And then Mary says, when in your mind did I become proficient at extraterrestrial decay? Well, Mary would be good at cringe moments. And then Alice, she goes to a hospital where Mouse is being kept under guard, and she tells the guard that she has uh, orders to uh, tran uh, move uh, at Mouse. And the crow guard is just like, oh, okay, he doesn't say anything. Okay, I was never notified. But this blonde girl who was, uh, you know, shielding her face from me, uh, no, eh, hell, no need to, you know, check with my superiors or confirm this or anything. And then we get a scene where Sophie says she, we should search drain pipes and dumpsters, saying, quote, remember, she's a sewer rat. What the frack? We've mostly seen Alice in abandoned warehouses, not sewers. And then Batwoman comes down after Mother's searching for and bashing in doors and just being a general gang. Batwoman comes in to talk to Sophie and she says, what became a probable cause? Well, Batwoman would be good at cringe moments at least this once. The rest of the time she sucks. Then we have a scene in prison with Jacob Kane where he is attacked and stabbed in the abdomen no less than three times. And then he gets the complete frack beat out of him, including having his head pounded into the wall repeatedly, hard enough to cause a concussion or at least maybe even straight in cave in his skull. And he's left lying in a pool of blood, a giant pool of blood on the floor. This knife, three times in the abdomen, must have hit multiple internal organs, missing his heart probably out of sheer luck. Why? Why is Jacob Kane not dead. Oh, that's right. I remember because the morons in charge of this show don't know the first thing about human anatomy. And so they play with time a little bit at the 13 minute, one second mark. Yes, that's all I'm to. 13, one minute. It's, it's every moment is stupid. And they know meth has exactly three hours, 37 minutes left. How the hell did they come to that exact calculation? And plus, despite having been swimming in scotch for about four hours, Beth is not passed out drunk. In fact, she's totally sober. And then Beth says, this is, In order for one of us to live, the other has to die. Yes, we know. We saw the episode title, and a lot of people watched the stupid trailers. We knew exactly about that. And plus, it is three minutes, thirty-seven minutes, three hours, thirty-seven minutes to go. This line and all of them in that scene should be delivered quickly, you know, like they were under some kind of time crunch rather than just swilling scotch for hours without getting completely plastered. And then Alice shows up at uh, Kate's office where Beth is. You know, Wayne Enterprise Security is just so good. And also, you know, chalk up another murder for Batwoman uh, because uh, Alice has killed somebody again. And then Luke, remember, they're in, they're in the office, right? And Luke has had a taser handy. He did when Kate first broke into the place. So why not grab this taser and tase Alice? And he doesn't. But Kate walks in. And, uh, you know, last I knew, she was supposed to be a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter, even though she's five foot three, ninety-seven 97 pounds, and anorexic. But why not kick the crap out of Alice and then take her in, you know, like a superhero would? So it's three hours to go and we have to stop for a little confab for almost six minutes. Nobody does anything when they could be catching Alice. Nobody does a thing until she throws her knife uh, at uh, Beth trying to kill her. Why didn't Kate just, everybody just standing there didn't tase her beat the crap out of her something anything that would have made sense you know apprehend her give her to the crows let her die she's a fragging multiple murderess and then alice tries to run away kate says alice stop luke says kate beth needs you i say no no kate needs to stop alice truss her up and then deal with beth beth isn't going anywhere and I'm at the 17 minute 26 mark, and there's still so much stupid yet to come. Alice then shows up at Mary's filthy, unsanitary, illegal clinic, and she's counting on Mary to be nice to her after killing her mother and getting her father thrown in jail. Just how stupid does Alice think that Mary is? And then we get a scene where August Cartwright pumps Mouse in the hospital full of truth serum. Too bad that he's going to get not any information out of Mouse since Mouse has no idea where Alice is. 
So we get back to the clinic and Mary, well, she's got super blood. Does it bring back Tribbles and Starfleet captains to life, I wonder? I sure hope she's O positive, by the way, because it pulls the drug, because Alice draws this blood and she's going to inject herself because she's O positive, I hope, because otherwise it's going to be pretty serious, uh, pretty serious uh, complications by injecting that blood into somebody else without the same blood type. And not to mention that Mary, she could really become very rich right now by selling her blood. The universal cure-all for everything ever? Damn, that would be really handy for every single doctor in the world to have. And then Mary, Mary of all people, finally does what Kate and everyone else should have done, tackles Alice and chains her up. But turns out, Mary is the only hero in this episode. And then we discover that Mary's filthy, unsanitary, illegal clinic has a landline phone? I haven't seen a landline phone in since forever. I mean, why does she, why does it have a landline phone? And then Alice dials the landline phone without even so much as looking at the number pad. I guess she's dialed the crows on a landline phone so much that she doesn't have to look. I guess she's got that number, like, <laughs> memorized. <laughs> And then from 2918 to 29, 2819 rather, to 2954, we are, I have myself constantly repeating as the crows show up at Wayne Enterprises because Alice has told them that she's there. She show up at Wayne Enterprises and they've got helicopters and everything and they're probably going to take 27 8 by 10 color glossy pictures with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one is to be used as evidence against them. But they're all just swarming around, and all I'm saying to myself the whole time is take it to the back cave, take it to the back cave, take it to the back cave for more than a minute. 2955 to 3175, completely wasting every bit of time with Mary's, a ghost of Mary's mother, a hallucination or something. We don't have too much time left, guys, but hey, I guess we needed some filler. And then back in the back cave, Beth says, Why do you risk your life for a city of strangers? Well, Beth would be good at cringe moments. Viewers have been asking that same question since episode one, and no motivation that we've been given makes any fracking sense, including this one. And, of course, Beth then has to put in, this isn't guilt, this is courage. Yeah, this is why Kate being the paragon of courage makes absolutely no sense. Kate isn't a paragon of anything. She's totally selfish, and not bringing in Alice when she has a chance causes Alice to have dozens of deaths, to which Batwoman is an accessory. And then they get the super blood. Uh, uh, Kate goes out and gets the super blood from Mary, and uh, she's like, uh, I, 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 for some reason, Kate is like, oh, do I, do I save the good one or the mass murderer, the, the serial killer? Hmm, which do I do? And Mary says, Kate, this is a no-brainer. Mary would be good at cringe moments. You know, it's only a matter of time before the crows find the elevator. They go back to the bad cave, and Alice and Kate says this. It's only a matter of time before the crows find the elevator because they're tearing up the office. Well, I guess this means that Kate's time as Batwoman is over. She's going to go to jail as an accessory to everything Alice has done in since episode one. And then this series will finally be over. Yay! Did Kate... There's a scene where you know, now Kate says, uh, take out my bat bike and go, you know, take Alice someplace else. I rewatched this several times, a little bit several times, and I, I, I didn't hear where she said to take, take uh, Beth. All I heard is her say that the bat bike would get them through the Crow checkpoint. Where, where are they going? And then we have August Cartwright. He has a previously pumped mouse full of truth serum, and somehow he got him out of the hospital past the Crow guards, and into a garage or a shed or something. I mean, Sophie's all about how they let her get away, and the crows are out there guarding this freaking room. How the hell did that happen? So then it turns out that they took Beth to the Twin Pines Inn, some kind of hotel, on the bat bike. And by this time, the crows are looking all over town for the bat bike. And in fact, Sophie knew where they were. She went there with a sniper rifle. Why weren't half the crows along with Sophie? If she knows where Beth is, why is she the only one? And why did she take a sniper rifle? And then August Cartwright snipes Beth. Okay, I didn't necessarily see August shooting him, shooting her, but you know, we all know this was gonna happen. 
So, with that, well, the series ends. Sophie nabs August Card, right? I mean, he's right there. Why not? No reason she can't. All the other crows that are coming around, well, they just, uh, you know, um, they connect, uh, they, they take uh, uh, Beth's body, they find out that it's a DNA match for Alice, and they close the case. Batham breathes a collective sigh of relief. Um, they also connect the car battery to the genitals of um, August Cartwright, and he tells them where Mouse is. They take Mouse into custody, and Gotham breathes a collective sigh of relief. Mary tells the crows where to find Alice. They show up, they take her into custody, find out that she's the DNA match for Beth, not sure what's going on, so they take her out back and they snuff her. God, Gotham breathes a collective sigh of relief. The Batcave is discovered and Kate is arrested. Gotham breathes a collective sigh of relief. A nice, happy ending, fade out the end. Except, of course, that this stupid show has, still has 10 episodes left, and it's been renewed for another season. How? 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 Why? I mean, this really is. This really is, if you think about it, the whole logical closure point. I mean, what are they going to do? Follow Mouse and Kate around in prison? <sighs> so, at the end of any episode, we ask ourselves, is this any good? No. Don't watch this steaming pile of octosaur squirt. Watch the bad 1984 Supergirl movie starring Helen Slater. The stupid plot makes more sense. And plus, of course, Helen's pretty hot in that movie. This is just awful. I mean, I really don't have words to describe how just awful it is. I mean, you'll have more fun watching Plan 9 from Outer Space. The general plot actually makes more sense. And at least that movie is so bad it's good and you can laugh at it. This is just bad. I mean, really, really bad. You will have more fun watching my reviews and seeing just how damn tortured I get over it. And yes, I'll come back next week a decrepit, tortured wreck. <sighs> just remember the views. Keep it in mind. Remember the views. I keep telling myself that. People who review this junk get reviews. Just keep plowing on through, no matter how much it makes you want to project I'll vomit. And that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, uh, I do a little ad copy. In the immortal style of Ern Ernie Anderson, one of those voiceover guys you always used to hear. <clears throat> Next time on the Fandai Master's Review of Batwoman. I'm gay. I'm really, really gay. I am totally self-absorbed and will let Alice kill dozens more people because of my own selfish desires. Plus, I'm really, really gay. That's next time on the Fandai Master's Review of Batwoman. So, thanks for watching. That is all the time that we have for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Oh, God, am I glad that's over. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.